Good morning once again, and I update uh, the top 10 advances in transcatheter valve therapy. As usual, there may be a, a more important, uh, just give the concept, although uh, there is a lot of data which has occurred in last one year uh, in this field. So basically, we know start and father of transcatheter valve therapy uh, with Anderson uh, working with the sheep uh, and, of course, went to the aortic valve and then live case done on April 16th uh, by Alan Cribier. I, would, I call him. Uh, but here last year, everybody had interaction, uh, that uh, father of uh, transcatheter valve therapy, and of course, since then, what is future? Future is what now, and we'll try to share. Of course, in all areas, pulmonic, aortic, I put a green, that we are done. We continue to improve, but from work point of view, done. Uh, mitral is still evolving, except the tier, where all the data showed, uh, which also have come into our uh, regular day-to-day -day life. Tricuspid valve emerging a little more, I think, ahead of the mitral, and of course, the time will tell which will come to the finish line. So, we all know that uh, any of these cases, as uh, Dr. Mehran uh, pointed out, uh, that it requires multidisciplinary approach and assessment of the risk factor for a particular patient. And of course, one thing which came up in these, which were not there before 10 years, is was frailty. Patients may be weak, may look good on the papers, but can't even walk can get out of the bed. So that has been incorporated in assessment of these uh, patients. And also everybody can do it, but they also have made it as our ACC guideline that referral to a primary or comprehensive heart valve center is reasonable when treatment options have been discussed. One, in asymptomatic patient with severe valvular heart disease, patients who may benefit from valve repair versus replacement and patients with multiple comorbidities. So we know that 750 plus uh, centers do tower and about 525 do mitral clip, but some complex cases still need to be referred to the uh, more uh, advanced centers. Now, what has happened is we know these various stages of valvular heart disease. So basically, at risk, progressive, asymptomatic to severe, we always reserve our treatment to severe. Why? Because that requires surgical intervention. We do a medical therapy before. But what has happened now is that we are going back to asymptomatic but severe. Not even severe, many of them moderate. Particularly moderate aortic stenosis trials are ongoing at present. So we are coming early. And we all know, early you intervene, hopefully you have better long-term prognosis. Two of them, which is very important, which is the growth in our tower volume. As you can see here, uh, this is the, the surgical volume, uh, which has slightly declined after when we get to the uh, inter low risk cases, but look at this. Big growth happened is untreated patient population. Those patients were not getting treated before. It was not because the surgical volume went down. No, the growth of the tower occurred largely by untreated aortic stenosis patient. And that led to 80,000 plus, maybe even, uh, I don't know whether right, would be the right number, 100,000 maybe uh, this year, but clearly continues to grow this field. Mitral also, Quite bit of growth now, of course, with the functional mitral, uh, with the, about 16,000 last year, uh, mitral clip uh, tier procedures done uh, for various indications. So both these fields are really evolving. With the note that the structure, which is in the red, transcatheter, wall therapy will continue to increase in our armamentarium. As you know, in the past was only PCI. Then endovascular added and now I think endovascular kind of flat until they have something more dramatic but uh, clearly the structure will continue to grow in next uh, coming years. So as every year I try to put 10 uh, top advances which will which had made some changes in our practice. So I start with the first one that is the cerebral embolic protection in tower which is the protected tower trial. We know that there are various regions for patient to have a CVA. Uh, because uh, these are elderly patients, whether it comes from the uh, valve or from the aorta and so. And you, in the beginning, actually bad name from partner 1B trial occurred because there was higher CVA rate compared to uh, surgery uh, in partner uh, that trial. So basically, since then, we defi refined the equipment and every other trial has shown equal or even lower CVA with the tower. So that was only in the beginning, but it still continues to remain. And this is about 3% uh, overall, which has not changed in terms of volume. The data have shown your volume, the stroke of the center is not dependent on the volume. It remains around 3%. And we know that those who have a stroke uh, have a higher mortality, less go home. And of course, uh, they continue to trouble uh, our patient population. 
So one device, Sentinel, had been approved, but clearly the data are more so on the microscopic and decrease uh, of the, a, the brain lesions, although no, some registry data have shown very positive effect of the central, uh, Sentinel cerebral protection system, which now led to two major trials. One which has been completed, protected tower, which I'll present, and second is the BHF protective TAVI uh, trial of a large number of patients. So this was a major trial, which we all were waiting. So since the approval of the central device without any clinical, in the, their trial, clinical benefit, it basically became, it was approved by FDA and became uh, our routine, uh, like the therapy for these uh, patients and we were using it. And then question came that does it really benefit in terms of the stroke rate? So overall 3,000 patients, tower only, tower with cerebral embolic protection device. And to our surprise, there was difference 0.6 percent lower, but did not make p-value. Surprise. Why? Because their prediction was a little different. So prediction was basically more than 1 percent decrease, and it actually decreased only 0.6. And so, uh, and, uh, but only thing was the disabling stroke was lower, as you can see here. Control 1.3 versus 0 0.5. Uh, 0 0.5. So you can say cerebral embolic protection device is beneficial to decrease disabling stroke. So question is, should we use it in every patient or select it? So what we have changed our policy now, the patients who are high risk for stroke, like AFib, patients with prior CVA, uh, bicuspid aortic valve, large uh, calcium on the valve, uh, valve in valve, those cases we are using. We used to use in about 65, 66%. Now that number is around 30% uh, because of uh, this uh, trial data. Now, the, clearly the BHF Protect TAVI, which is ongoing, large number, double the size of patients, which I would say probably will give the final answer on this field. Second is vascular closure device. One of the important more co complication occur is vascular complication at present with the tower because of the sheath being 15, 16, and 18. So there is a choice closure is the Manta device, which is uh, compared to what we use the ProStar or ProGlide. Manta is a kind of a plug. Uh, and uh, supposed to be simpler, uh, initial studies show benefit of a Manta-based device, then it put to the trial, comparing the Manta versus the ProGlide, and basically showed overall that uh, the benefit was not there, rather it was uh, on a negative direction. So ProGlide, what we have been using, was better. So this Manta actually also cost-wise was quite expensive, three times more of the ProGlide, uh, which you use two or three. So basically after this trial, it's really hard to see that which case you want to use uh, with the Manta. Yes, it's easy to use, but definitely from any vascular point of view, vascular parameter, it did not benefit. Then same day discharge post hour. Guess what? Life has come around. We are used to talk about same day discharge after PCI. Now we are talking about same day discharge of the tower patients. So this actually happened during the time of the COVID where patients, we want, didn't want to admit the patient, there were no beds in the hospital. So question was that can the patient be discharged, uh, protect tower study, which was a large number of patients, but of them, 6% selected for same day discharge. What the basically means, they were clear cut, no complication, no vascular issues and so, and they did very well. Uh, overall, most of them done with a conscious sedation and uh, within same day were discharged, uh, procedural success was significant, no, uh, I mean 100%, no complication, and 30-day outcome were all ex ex expected, about 6% readmission, which happened with the tower patient for various issues. So seems to be the same day discharge could happen, and they have a nice protocol written about it, that to which case to be done, and more importantly, that we can, the biggest issue remain in the United States, hopefully Medicare. So right now, the tower is the inpatient procedure. If they start getting into this outpatient procedure, we all will be in trouble because of the cost reimbursement. We all know ambulatory PCI versus inpatient PCI. There is a big difference in the reimbursement, and uh, this still will continue to evolve, but I'm sure selected patients can safely be discharged. Now, also, we always worry about arrhythmia. Uh, so now there are a lot of systems which are available for ambulatory EKG monitoring uh, for these patients, and if they develop heart block, immediately call goes to uh, the the central system and then patient can immediately come to the hospital for treatment and more importantly that current tower structural cases we have at least nine to twelve bodies in the room when we do it some used to be like more now it's still at least ten but now what is going is minimalistic tower three to five staff in the procedure room no anesthetist no cardiopulmonary bypass no other staff 
So it will come out to be maybe just like once you go down to that path of same day discharge, you have to, oh, the rest of the cost has to go down also. The Dr. Vinnie Bappet actually uh, uh, showed me the presentation a few weeks ago that they, in almost one third of the cases, there are only four people in the room. There's no anesthetist. So just like we're doing a PCI being done, uh, the tower is being, routine towers are being done that way. Then issue comes the stroke management. I talked about the stroke is a big issue. Those who have after tower, you have good valve, but if your stroke is not good. So question is how to treat it. So there are a lot of uh, data, but this is uh, the Astro uh, Tavi study was management and outcome of acute ischemic stroke complicating uh, tower. And basically that based on the severity of the stroke, uh, mild, moderate or severe, we know the outcomes are bad. There is a gradient, no question on that. But more important is that once you have more severe stroke, if you do intervention, you decrease, you improve the outcome. So that basically the part of the Astro Tavi study was that get a role of neuro intervention, aggressive neuro intervention in the treatment of the stroke post Tavi. And what learn out, as you can see here, conservative versus interventional treatment, the both uh, blue and red bar the clearly higher in the conservative and intervention, particularly in the severe stroke. So we have, based on the severe stroke, you take the patient to neuro intervention, has a better outcome, and this basically puts it together. And what we did is, we actually also having the trouble. So I'll show you the data. We, our data with the TVT registry, all are very good, but we still have slightly higher in the CVA group. So one, that is one. Secondly, to treat that stroke, so we uh, also, came up with our protocol by multidisciplinary approach, getting all our uh, neurointerventionalists, neurologists and so, and this actually, uh, the data of Sinai has been published uh, in uh, Journal of American Heart Association, accepted actually, this is available on the uh, website now. So basically it came up that large vessel occlusion on CT. So no longer you wait and don't give thrombolytic, because many of them you can give thrombolytic if some region, but large one, they should go for neurointerventional procedure. And what has happened is we have shown that since pre-procedure and post-procedure, more patients going for neurointervention treatment, and we actually have given thrombolytic to only one patient. But this does occur, as I mentioned, about 2 to 2.2% 2 .2 .2 of cases of about 45 uh, tower we do per month. Then tower optimization. It's a, basically, we know that you can do a tower right away, take a few minutes only, but now how can you do it better? Optimize the tower result for long-term benefit. So one of them is a very big proponent, and of course, uh, Lars in uh, Center Garden Europe and here Gilbert Tang, lot of papers on the aligned tower, the alignment of the valve. Why? Because many things are independent. So once you have the valve aligned better at time of deployment, your coronary access, valve durability, valve functioning, residual gradient all improves when the valve is uh, commissural alignment happens. So that commissural view, and we'll emphasize that during the, act, the active, actual procedures, and uh, they basically, the purpose there is that you have a better functioning valve with not only at time zero, but more in the future, and biggest thing is coronary access on these patients. So they, they are all the science behind which tab, which to rotate, and so all that is available at present, and so. Uh, so commissural alignment, aligned tower, really is the next way to improve our overall outcome. Second, for the uh, evolute valve, we have the optimized pro study, which has been completed. So basically where the valve should be, uh, how much it has shown to improve uh, overall pacemaker rate, less uh, paravalvular leaks and so, so optimized pro study, very good. The question always comes that you have CAD, patient positive stress test, you do PCI or not PCI along with the tower, and we learned by like every trial in the past that whether you do PCI or not PCI, uh, whether complete or incomplete revascularization does not make difference. And I know the complete tower trial, which is ongoing, will answer this question for, for a short, that whether PCI should be done with the tower patients or just tower alone. Then other issue, which came up uh, quite uh, almost six, seven years ago, that hyper-attenuated leaflet thin thickening, that uh, as a part of the dysfunction of the tower valve. And there were data, Raj Makar showed that by giving anticoagulation, or patients who are on anticoagulation, you had less of this HALT, H-A-L-T, we call. And basically, it turns out to be that we felt that maybe HALT is associated with mortality. So a lot of papers now have come that HALT is not associated with mortality. It does cause more valve degeneration. That's one. Second, it does disappear by giving anticoagulation. 
And we also le learned that giving routine anticoagulation to our patients is bad. Uh, George Dangas did the trial, Galileo showed no, but rather harmful. So not in those cases, but cases who have halt, they have increased gradient, they are associated with the valve degeneration, it's reasonable to put them on anticoagulation and it gets better. So then issues about the woman versus man, which always have been uh, the sex differences in any procedural outcome. And here actually meta-analysis showing that uh, the, all the complications, acute complications are higher in women, similar to PCI. But more importantly, your long-term benefit is better in women compared to men. Uh, and the, this, the, in the bicuspid, uh, also a little trend, but the overall showing that there is definitely a disproportionate uh, benefit uh, in women, uh, long-term benefit of tower compared to men. The, lastly, the low flow, low gradient, in addition to the topestral, that all the studies have shown, the meta-analysis by our group, uh, showed that whether it's a classical, paradoxical, or normal for a low gradient, so the intervention is better compared to medical therapy, conservative therapy. And the lastly is, compared to what we, that once the valve is put, do you wait? till it degenerate, or you can do a periodic balloon valve opacity, late BAV. So data are coming that maybe some patients, so when they start having some gradient, you don't wait till it becomes a gradient of 40 or 60. Maybe you start early stage, to start dilating the valve with the balloon valve plasty, some data, but seems to be more so for the sapien valve, but an improve of the gradient, whether it will incorporate in our practice, we need to see. We have done only one case of uh, balloon dilatation with a moderate uh, valve degeneration. Then, of course, a lot you will hear about uh, the uh, TAVI system for the aortic regurgitation, pure. Jena valve trilogy, a lot of data from the outside uh, America. The trials have started in United States. They're off and on, but it's still ongoing. Uh, and hopefully, we'll have a device for pure aortic regurgitation. Current valves can be used, but they're not effective because here it is dependent on a cusp, uh, the little eclipse, so that it stays there in the non-calcific aortic regurgitation. Then valve and valve degeneration, tower in, uh, in the valve degeneration, whether in the uh, in surgical valve or in the tower valve, and there is a one small randomized trial. We know the life history of these tower valves. There are various kinds of bioprosthetic valve failure and bioprosthetic valve dysfunction takes place besides just endocarditis uh, and uh, the real valve degeneration. And you monitor them anytime you have more than 20 millimeter increase in gradient is counted as a valve dysfunction and what to do with those there are many protocols have come but more important is that if patient have particularly that uh, the no structural valve deterioration you decide that redo tower particularly we use it only in patients who are high risk at present in a low and intermediate risk if you have a structural valve deterioration of the bioprosthetic valve those patients go for surgery. But high risk, get for tower. But more importantly, uh, the many of the cases, the tower patients also can have a redo tower. Uh, of course, many of them will require surgery, as I mentioned. So data basically are there for many of uh, the analysis point of view, valve in TAVI versus the redo sour. So overall, 30 day, short term, better. Uh, valve in uh, tower compared to surgery, one year mortality is identical. So only negative point of the valve in uh, the surgery, the TAVI in the surgical valve is that there is a higher prosthetic mismatch. Clearly patient prosthetic mismatch, but rest points, 30 day mortality, major bleeding, all favors, one year outcome were equal and of course lower length of stay. So collect at present, it's done only in the severe, aort, uh, in a patient with a high risk uh, or inoperable, uh, low to intermediate risk is still go for surgical uh, uh, second uh, the, uh, valve and valve or the redo sour. So now uh, the also the question is based on the design of your original tower valve, can you put a second tower valve whether same uh, self-expanding into self-expanding or balloon expandable to balloon expandable, the whole protocols based on the CT anatomy where the coronary biggest issue is the coronary obstruction. So it decides what we do. Uh, and uh, there are data to compare tau in tau versus tau in sau uh, and overall showing that equal kind of outcome and uh, maybe a procedural safety, procedural success, all equal. But some of them maybe favor particularly the tau in tau as you see the height of the 
in terms of the gradient and so. So then explant. So many times the tower we explant. So there are no, of course, cannot be randomized, but there are data there that if uh, whether you do a repeat tower or tower explant, the tower explant definitely have a higher 30 day mortality, 30 uh, day mace, relative risk is decreased by using the tower, but selected cases, uh, overall this is a tough situation. And we are going to show those cases today uh, for the tower in tower and tower in surgery. Uh, then uh, the question is, uh, there is a whole registry for the redo tower and of course when it occurs, usually it starts happening after a few years. So some cases have early, deterioration, but that is usually, uh, as I mentioned, that uh, the halt or so, but the key is that once you have uh, the redo tower, whether you use a balloon expandable or self-expanding, overall outcomes are similar. So that's only difference was in the data that if you put a self-expanding valve, the residual gradient after the second tau and tau is lower compared to balloon expandable, but otherwise rest of the outcomes are similar. Then there is a one small randomized trial uh, by Kabao in uh, the small surgical aortic prosthesis, the, all those were basically uh, 23 millimeter or low, and basic balloon expandable versus self-expanding showed outcomes were similar, but you have higher residual gradient with the balloon expandable versus self-expanding. So same, which we know otherwise also that uh, self-expanding have a lower gradient, whether they use native or you in the valve and valve system. Then the TR updated. Class, basically, uh, this is a very nice uh, review of uh, these cases, uh, what is done in the United States from the TVT registry uh, in terms of tier or the TMVR, number of cases, who gets it. Most of them still, the functional MR is being used, but majority still remain uh, more complex, uh, high-risk uh, degenerative MR. And of course, uh, length of stay about uh, uh, has decreased significantly. More importantly, mortality has decreased and uh, of course overall improvement, which we know, uh, and uh, numbers I have already mentioned, the complications continues to decline. Uh, thus some do occur, uh, leaf detachment and show, uh, the stroke is very small, uh, and over the years, all the outcomes, uh, whether the mortality rate or the stroke rates, all kind of declining over the years based on what type of uh, valve degeneration it is. So better in the degenerative MR versus functional MR. Then CLASP, basically a new device, Pascal, uh, tiered the as to as repair, uh, has come in the equation now because of the original data of the CLASP showing good uh, outcome at two years. And uh, now we actually have randomization, a small trial, CLASP 2D, Pascal versus mitral clip, a two to one randomization. And basically what showed that overall, little higher, you know, it's maybe a learning curve, little higher procedural time, but overall the safety and uh, effectiveness was Sim similar. So there was some data that maybe uh, the lower regurgitation at follow-up in the CLASP, CLASP group compared to the mitral club, uh, you know, Pascal group compared to mitral clip, but overall seems to be we are new device in our uh, equation for the, uh, uh, for, uh, for the patient with the degenerative mitral rigors. It's only approved for high-risk degenerative mitral rigors and it's available now. Uh, then question the uh, the about risk, we always try to come up with the risk factor. Now there is a co-opt risk score, which has been submitted by, uh, published by Greg Stone's team, that you have various factors. So, and you can determine based on that, what should be the patient's outcome of the two year death or heart failure. So more the risk, higher bad is the outcome. And clearly the last one remains the tier. A lot of reports have come in cardiogenic shock. We have done few cases also. Cardiogenic shock, severe MR, those patients don't go for surgery and tier is very successful in those cases. So uh, then very nice paper just came out this week by our group, uh, atrial functional mitral rigorj. So went through the whole history, how to, what to causes, very nice uh, uh, central figure, put together very nice document of the atrial mitral regurgitation by Mount Sinai team. Then the TMVR. So we, the, basically TMVR, the type, most of them are still valve in valve uh, by using the sapien and more so for valve degeneration. Very few uh, for, uh, the, for the calcific valve and uh, the indications as I showed here, MAC is low, but particularly continues to have a higher mortality. The MAC it still does not work. We still need to have a good treatment for the MAC, which are not surgical candidate, which kind of TMVR. So individual complications are same. 
the over the years things are getting better and uh, new devices uh, is going we keep getting report time to time and uh, we know that 109 has been approved in uh, in uh, europe it is still waiting to be approved here very effective device but again transepical so what we really waiting is the transeptal and transeptal is the early feasibility study of the intrepid uh, which is apollo subarm of the apollo and basically transeptal which have now done about 70 plus cases six we are done at mount sinai very effective require little bit planning because particularly the venus uh, we have a very high vascular complication at one point uh, but we haven't but largely because of the uh, large sheath device but now you can replace the valve tmvr transeptally no surgical uh, you know initially we are doing with that apical approach but transeptal in selected cases very effective no mitral regurgitation just like a surgical valve replacement now i know there will be a lot of discussion today two trials in this field of the mitral degradation repair mr and primary mr primary trials so comparing tear versus surgery uh, are ongoing at present and we will have a part of discussion at sinai we actually expect to do about 75 uh, uh, mitral clip uh, and tri clip uh, procedures this year and very important i can tell you we take a pride uh, my our team that average mr reduction average mr post procedure a gradient and more importantly device time 25 minutes and this is what the national uh, so good and we'll see it today so they have the case so my team is at uh, uh, clearly at the forefront that are they going to do this case within 30 minutes so we actually have 30 minutes assigned and there are a lot of criteria where you should tear versus tmvr and we will going to hear more and more the tricuspid which remain the valve i would say that probably has taken a little forward uh, from the various uh, devices to take care of the tricuspid regurgitation and uh, but it has come little more than mitral the triclip triluminate uh, we are the center uh, where dr adams uh, the pi they showed the role in patients uh, this is on randomized trial ongoing triclip versus medical therapy which is just completed and uh, the role in showed good outcome and uh, as you can see excellent procedural success device time is still high just about 2 hours uh, and so uh, and uh, the number of clips and so as you shown here many of them actually use 3 and 4 clips but very effective data or the short term which was presented but very safe uh, from the clip point of view just like a safe clip of the mitral side then the triclopid valve replacement by evoke tricentral very nice uh, evoke initial data of the non randomized uh, now they have 70 plus almost no my tricuspid regurgitation after that overall safe and this actually we'll hear more and more because going into the transcend two trials which will evoke system against medical therapy in randomized so clearly i they said that we may see the tricuspid valve ttvr sooner than maybe tmvr approved but then the clip can be used for the tricuspid also good data a uh, lot of other trials on going this field so i would say the most important uh, advance for us is everything looks good for the tower but then who should get surgery sawar in this tower era so to me this is basically that which case is better sawar is much better than tower that is where the decision comes now for the team who to decide we know that all the trials we have done all the multiple publications all of the njm except one came into a jack uh, which was the core original evoluta uh, i mean core wall trial and this eight major randomized trial utilio tower in severe as in various sts risk many of them showed superior results versus sawar except one showed higher stroke rate otherwise stroke rate is lower if not equal there so now the latest just came out this year uk tavi again same tavi better than surgery even at one year as shown here with area if you combine death and uh, point you trend towards a better so so now the growth the complications everything has decreased uh, growth has increased complications of the tower has decreased as i mentioned 700 plus centers are doing the tower uh, big number then question is which patient with as should be referred to surgery rather than transcatheter valve so i think the key is it's a multiple multidisciplinary team approach and then you decide not acutely what is the long term for those patients based on when they present whether patient presenting at age of 70 60 or 90 so this is where the favor sour or tower so basically one is the age 
So clearly we have 65, more than 80, 65 to 80. Clearly if you can see here, uh, surgery for less than 65, more than 80 will be your TAVI, other in between. Second, uh, you have to incorporate the life history of the patient. Whether patient is going to live 20 years, 10 years. So you do decide whether you do surgery because TAVI and TAV can be done, but we try to avoid it. If that is the case, you do surgery now and then put a tower 10 years later. Second, surgical risk. We learned all the trials that now it doesn't matter. You just make it a high and low risk. Low risk because you need a surgical by, uh, standby. Some of these cases which we actually stop doing it now. Then frailty. As I mentioned, the frailty is an important factor. Simple, low albumin, anemia, slow walking speed, hand grip, all more the players, more the points, higher is the outcome. Uh, bad outcome for these patients. Then, valve morphology. That's a very important point. So, when we are doing a tower, it has to be that you are going for a least or no complication of the complication that occur. Why? You size the valve correctly. You appropriate selection of the valve. So, clearly, unfavorable, large calcium score, porcelain aorta, and of course, LVOT outflow tract, high calcium. So, those are unfavorable. More so, patients with the bicuspid aortic valve, they have also aortopathy. So you have to decide if valve area is the less calcium in the bicuspid, but aortic uh, root dimension is 4.9 to 5. This patient probably will need aortic valve surgery or aortic surgery in 4-5 years. It's better to go for surgery rather than doing the tower. Then femoral axis. Very important that all the data of the tower superiority more so for surgery is transfemoral. Although we do all the crazy approaches now, we are doing a transcarotid. Forget the lower stroke. Uh, but I, with the selected cases, we are doing transcarotid. We have done three cases at Sinai. Then transcaval, if there is no vascular access. So yes, the favorable anatomy has translated to a better outcome. Then concomitant valve disease, severe AR, severe primary MR, TR, all those once you have concomitant disease, that will favor patient go for surgery compared to tower. Then patient with a CAD, three vessel, significant left main disease. Those patients based on the age of the patient, you decide. So a patient at the age of 68, otherwise good case for tower but has complex CAD. I think that patient will be better off with the cabbage and surgery, uh, surgical valve replacement. Yeah, that patient at present at age of 80, probably that's okay to do a multi-vessel, multiple PCI and the TAVI. So this is really has incorporated into our equation. And the lastly is uh, the aortic disease requiring surgery, septal hypertrophy, active endocarditis, favor surgery and porcelain aorta, previous cardiac surgery, chest radiation, chest deformation, multiple comorbidities, all will favor a TAVI. So this is a kind of algorithm which we use in day to day for these patients management. So just wanted to show our data at uh, Sinai. We're doing quite well. This is our last year. Uh, overall, uh, this year we expect 525. The length of stay is a little high still. Part of that is because with frequent travel with this COVID testing within five days, that is really increased. We almost went down to a, a two, a, a three, now actually 3.5. Uh, overall, observed to mortality ratio, expected mort ratio is quite well. Uh, and these are our outcome for last year. Now we actually have done uh, almost all cases. Last year with the transfemoral, we had done uh, 1,000 consecutive cases transfemoral. Uh, and uh, we are presenting that uh, data, we have sent it for uh, uh, publication. But key is, the just like for STS gives the uh, rating of various uh, one, two, three stars, the STS does now for TVT registry also. So based, uh, these are our data for uh, three year running in terms of Mount Sinai national benchmark. We did quite well uh, and uh, we got a three star uh, this year for the, from STS. So that was a great news besides having a tower uh, certified area. So with that note, I'll just complete. Let's put it together. Uh, pre PCI pre-tower, Manta vascular closure device, TMVR in MAC, no good. <laughs> Cerebral embolic protection, uh, tau in tau versus tau in sour, plus minus, some data plus and minus. Then tower alignment, neurointervention intervention in TAVI stroke, same day discharge, one thumbs up. Then the new tier data, particularly we got uh, with Pascal, the transeptal TMVR and the TTVR and triclip, two thumbs up. The real is the decision algorithm for Sauer and Tower and Sever AS. I think really uh, the data has made it clear for us to put together 
lifestyle management of these patients uh, to become better interventionalists and improve survival. So just to add on to our uh, cccliveCases.org, which continues to great success, now about 30,000 per month, we get viewers, over 2 million now. Uh, and uh, this actually is a big hit, both India and USA. We see that almost uh, the 65-70%, whether it's a YouTube or CCC Live, India or USA, very successful, very, uh, anytime we go there, uh, of course, any of the meetings and India, uh, people uh, come to that how uh, good educational format it has been. We do a stretch every other month and coronary every other month Tuesday and the second Tuesday of the month and uh, third Tuesday we do a coronary intervention. And to continue that mission, we'll continue next. So now not one hour. What about 24 hour? Channel, TV channel, like a live TV channel. So one day, uh, one day uh, per week. Will start in third week of uh, uh, of uh, January as a test. Then it will go uh, because we have multiple centers, uh, 12 centers globally. People will be doing a cases in China, Japan, India in their own time frame. So 24-hour channel, uh, and uh, Samir Mehta is the brain behind, uh, working quite a bit with the, all the leaders to make this uh, uh, the advance our interventional cardiology, live interventional cardiology to the next level will be the MedStream 360. You'll hear more about it in the days to come. Thank you very much.